This is the fourth revision of Kofitex conical grinders. Versions 1 and 2 had 68mm conicals. Version 3 switched to 71 from Mazur's famed Rober grinder. So what's up with version 4? Well, the hallmark feature is the new grinding system. Two burr sets instead of just one. Beans first enter a custom, coarse grinding conical before finding their way down into the 71mm set. The explicit goal is to stabilize the feed rate and therefore the resulting particle distribution. Technical details aside, I can tell you that the resultant cups taste like no conical you've used for espresso before. Before we dive into it, let's make some coffee. This shot here is taken with the actual dosing funnel slash cap off. You're able to see how the beans are being fed down into the coarse burr set through the almost impelling arm that is making sure that no beans get caught on the wall. In this quick little snapshot of my workflow, I'm adjusting the pile of grounds in the basket with the Levercraft Ultras WDT tool, which is a fantastic way to easily and quickly manipulate the grounds in a consistent manner. Using the Coffitec Lev Tamp to provide even pressure the whole way down, just pressing until the cake is compacted. And I'm a big fan of trying to maintain my machine's cleanliness by putting an AeroPress filter on top, both to help have a better water distribution, and that's more of just a theory, but really I just don't like seeing grit on my shower screen. I like to have to back flush as infrequently as possible and just have to wipe away grit. I really don't like it. Now I know that for some of you, this is probably the hallmark of any kind of video for coffee on YouTube, the borderline pornographic shot of slow-mo espresso. So I'll just let you have this moment to yourself as you gaze at it silently. Ah, oh, well, that's actually a pretty good pull, yeah? Well, sadly, you can't be here to drink it with me, so let's just cut this clip short. I'll ask you to close your eyes and imagine this. The last time you had espresso from a conical grinder, and especially the Rober. Think of the interplay of acidity, bitterness, particulate, body, and flavor. Focus your mind to the extremes, the sharpest, least pleasant aspects of the cup. Now, erase them from the picture. This is what the dual spur system tastes like. All of the benefits and pleasurable nature of a tactile, blended conical cup, but none of the downsides in the way of unnecessary bitterness or sourness. Because of this, I believe that this is the best espresso grinder for most people. You're able to use the widest range of roasts and origins and still produce a tasty cup, or at worst, inoffensive. This is a marked difference compared to the other grinders I've tested so far, where certain grinders do better depending on the roast level. With the MC4, I have not had a bad cup from a mixture of the filter and espresso roasts that I have here. So this is the second dual burr system that I'm aware of that's available, but how does it compare to the Versalab DRM hybrid conical and flat system? Well, besides using this coarse breaking conical set, Kofitex stresses that a key difference between this and the DRM system is an intentional buffer space between the burr sets. They aren't stacked directly on top of each other. This is to allow particles to be fed at a more consistent rate into the fine grinding portion of the 71 millimeter set by allowing the spacing and the coarse section of the second burr to act as an auger for feeding. I'll say it now, this grinder has earned a place on my bench. I have no plans at this time to replace it. Going back to my description of the flavor, I want to expand on the inoffensive bit. I do not think that this cup profile will be universally loved. It does such a good job of cleaning up the cup that those who prefer intentional bitterness and sourness blended into their beverage will be disappointed. This system has removed those aspects from all cups tasted so far. So how does it compare to the DRM burr set in the Versalab? They do not taste the same. MC4 unmistakably tastes like a cleaned up conical profile, whereas the Versalab tastes more like filter coffee that's been enhanced with gelatin. You will not confuse these two. I do think that MC4 can tolerate a wider range of coffees and therefore would be the more widely picked unit if the average person were forced to pick one. I'm going to keep both of them around for the foreseeable future, but as I'm sure you may have guessed by now, permanence is never guaranteed for equipment here. One thought. We know feed rate is important, but a follow-up question for you, the audience, is this. 
Is it simply the rate of beans entering the burrs that matters, or is it the consistency of the particles that enter the fine grinding set that really matters? Five feeds, say, a niche zero, one bean at a time. Is that actually accomplishing the same thing, or does it need to be broken down into some chunks and fines first in order to taste like this? Based on my experience with the flow control discs on the niche, I'm prone to say no. I don't know a firm answer on this, but this is a first great step towards clarity on this issue. Let me know in the comments your experience, either regrinding coffee down to a smaller particle size using your existing grinder, how you like MC4 if you have one at home, or even the Versalab, and your thoughts just in general about the new, brave new world of these mixed burr, and well, that's not really brave new world, that's been around for a long time, but uh, the brave new world of a second set that you can get of a dual burr system out into the wild instead of just a plain Jane one burr. So, who do I think MC4 is really for? I think that if you like espresso for milk drinks, if you like espresso that is consistent, never too harsh, very dependable in terms of consistency from cup to cup, I think that this is your thing. If you are trying to push the boundaries on extraction yield, you're okay with a thin cup that is more reminiscent of water than jelly or even mud, then this is not going to be for you. If you are of the most uber light roast coffee cognoscenti, you may not like this. I like it. I don't care that the yields might only get up to you know the upper ramp part of gold cup range. You're not going to get a 25% extraction yield easily, at least in normal espresso parameters of like a, a normale, one to two from this grinder. But again, if you've paid attention to the videos so far, I, you, you should know that I certainly don't think that that matters. I love this espresso. I'm going to keep this grinder around for quite a bit of time, unless something comes along that's better. And in the meantime, keep drinking great coffee.